Hi, and welcome to the Shadow Ruins of Empire with your host, Rafael Pinero. Do you remember the little tiff, the little spat between Microsoft and Sony uh, when at the release of the new consoles? You know, the current console generation. Do you remember that little video that Sony made to sort of have a dig at Microsoft for Microsoft inserting uh, almost always online DRM on their machines? Remember that? You remember this? This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. PlayStation. Of course you remember, because I just put it in the video, so you're seeing it. Congratulations. You have an excellent memory. But why the hell did that happen? How come we had in the past generation things like online passes? How come we had uh, uh, video game uh, publishers saying that they were entitled to the profit of sales from used games? What the hell? Really? Where did this come from? Well, you see, according to Microsoft, although yes, I know they changed the settings on their machine, on their black box, as it supposedly... Uh, doesn't do that anymore. I used to check every time. Uh, and also ditch the whole, you know, spying machine on top of the black box, which wasn't creepy at all. Yeah, they um, they seem to believe, and a lot of uh, AAA publishers seem to believe that, you know what? You don't own anything. That's right. You do not own the games that you supposedly buy, that you pre-order that you wait for on, uh, you know, at midnight in front of a GameStop. You may have a physical copy, but alas, you own nothing. They, on the other hand, own everything. But wait a minute, didn't I give this, these guys $60 plus tax for that thing that I supposedly don't own? What was the money for? Ah, yes. You see, what your money gives you is um, it's a ticket, basically. What you're acquiring is nothing more than access. And yes, I'm going to use that word a lot in this video. Access, access, and oh, by the way, access. It's like going to a movie theater. You know, you buy a ticket to see the movie. I suppose, say, buying the DVD or the Blu-ray so you can watch it at home as many times as the disc will last. Even though most games can still be bought in a physical form, just like a DVD. You could buy them before like that, so why change? It's like uh, going to an amusement park. Yes, you paid 50 to $60 to get in, plus tax. But, uh, well, it just grants you a chance to be in the park with your family and your friends. To have a jolly good day. You pay $60 to get in. And then you look at the racks of t-shirts and say, Wouldn't be nice to don a new skin for only fourteen ninety nine each. I'm hungry. Maybe I should pay a lesser amount of cash for to get, you know, food in my belly and a nourishing drink because it's hot out here. Oh, let's call that a microtransaction, you know, for food. And then you're, well, the lady who paid for all this, she is uh, someone who loves uh, roller coasters. And the reason why she wanted to go to the park was that they had the meanest, biggest roller coaster around. She loves the roller coasters. And the family drops over to the other side of the park to, well, I'm gonna, you know, go to the roller coaster. And there's a ticket booth there with a nice chap there waiting for you. And he says, it'll be $20. And you're like, what? Really? Oh, yeah. But I paid $60 to get in. Oh, no, no. You paid $60 to get access to the park. If you want access to this new, brand new roller coaster we just added, you know, this new content that we have here. Fun, fun, fun. It'll be $20. Yeah, it'll be $20. Well, you know, little Susie, she really likes the animatronic dolls. And those are always been in the park. So let's go and watch the show. And then we'll make our minds well enough. We'll pay $20 for five minutes of fun. Hair racing fun. But five minutes nonetheless. So you go where they have the uh, animatronic thing. And, well, there is no ticket booth there. Thank God. Instead, there's a big old sign that says, Close for repairs. And a man comes out and all rolls and grease and says, Oh, I'm sorry, but it's closed for today. We're just patching some stuff. 
But maybe, tomorrow, perhaps, at the earliest, it'll be good to go. And that's it. That's it. Your access to the park gave you absolutely nothing. Now, granted, you could run around the park and you didn't have to buy the t-shirts. And you could have done without the uh, the roller coaster, right? Even though it was all the brochures. And that's the reason why you came here in the first place. But, you know, you, you got to be the park, right? Right? See, that's the mentality. That's the way we're thinking here. Access. And it only does, I mean, uh, let's abandon the, uh, and out the, the park thing. It, it, it's gone beyond the breaking point. And I'm sure some people are going like, well, you know, you just said it was voluntary, blah, blah, blah. Come on, really? But there's other problems as well with this because the problems never end, such as early access. It says so in the, in the title. You see, if you go to Steam and you go into one of these early access thingies uh, and you pay money, well, you're not paying for a product. You're not even paying for the promise of a future product. You're paying for early access to whatever it is that they put up there. Hopefully, it will be fun. Fun enough to justify the money you pay. But here's the thing. They explicitly tell you that they're not promising to deliver anything at any time soon. They hope that your hard-earned cash will help them finish this product sometime in the future. Not today. Certainly not tomorrow. Perhaps we'll get into it day day after that. Sure, it's a bit unfair. There's a lot of early access stuff that has really been pretty good. Uh, but they're like 20% good compared to the 80% not so good. Not to mention the big ones that have just literally taken the money and well, ran. And it's all legal because you're paying for access. Oh, yeah, by the way, Steam, would you do something about this? You know, like curate your store? Well, no, we we don't do that. We just provide access to the people that sell this stuff if you have a problem go take it up with them and we don't we don't curate and by the way if these people decide to pull the products from our store in the future uh, that means also that you won't be able to download anything ever again uh, might not be able to use our servers to play the games or so on and so forth um, not only that if they decide retroactively that an abandoned game that we sold to you as abandoned or you got from a ROM site uh, or whatever, uh, they or a video that you made with a 25-year-old uh, cast off of a game that you fondly remembered but nobody has played in that amount of time, they can still reach out to YouTube or Steam or whatever, yank the product and whack the finger in your face and say, you know what? You don't get to play with our game. Because the only thing you gave us was money for, you know what I'm going to say. Say it with me. Access. That's right. That's the only thing you get. And on and on and on. I think right now you're getting the image of some of the problems. There's this little arrangement. This one-sided, open-ended, until they close the doors in your face type of arrangement. Uh, is for us, right? And, and basically, this is what lies at the festering heart of the patching culture wars and many of the sort of gaming culture wars. Another example, just one thrown in for good measure, is the idea of entitlement or being entitled to something, being a bad thing. You see, in a world where you buy stuff and you own stuff, you're entitled to certain rights you know you're entitled to complete products or products at work you're entitled for your money back you know stuff like that but in a world where you only pay for access you are entitled to nothing absolutely nothing we might be benevolent enough to give you stuff but if you push us too much and push us too far we will look at you in the eye and say are you thinking monsieur that you think you're entitled to something you're an idiot. But make sure that uh, next year when we go from Paris to London, mate, you get that one too. Jolly old glingling. Enjoy. Right? Right. So there you have it. You know, that's the problem. The question is, is as you look at the title of this channel, it's called Lessons Learned. And we have learned the lesson that yeah, we have little or no rights as of this moment as consumers. And I talked about this before, you know, being patient, not getting on the hype train. 
uh, demanding your rights as a consumer. But if you're not even a consumer, you're just paying for that brown ticket. It's not even golden. It's sold to you as golden, but it's kind of cheap toilet paper thing that you can hand her over. Uh, where are we standing? What, what can we do? I feel myself defeated. I wish I had the answer. I do not have the answer. But here's the thing. There's a comment section below. There's some links to other videos I made as well. You guys can hash this out. I will be reading the comments. I always do and try to, uh, you know, a uh, answer any questions you have. Please, if you're just going to comment and saying, well, that's just the way it is. So it's the way it is. Don't be so entitled. Uh, you'll be politely ignored. Politely, but you'll be ignored. If you actually are coming to have a nice discussion and hash and give actual attempts at giving actual solutions to this, not only are you more than welcome, but we'll try to figure it out together. Well, as always, also not only forget not only forget to comment, but also subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you in the land of access. Good night. Wipe! <laughs>